Protectors of the Sunna. Protectors of the Sunna. Welcome to another session of our series on the jinn. And what we've been discussing for this past week is how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shared with us as Muslims that there are weapons that we can use as believing, practicing Muslims that will aid us in fighting against the jinn. And uh, uh, why is it so important? Who can answer this question? Why is it so important for us to learn about the jinn? A lot of people might ask, why am I teaching this? Why is it of interest for every Muslim to learn about the jinn? Or maybe you think learning about them is not important. Let me hear, let somebody get on the mic and tell me, do you think it's important to learn about the jinn? And if so, why? It's very important to learn about the jinn because they are a part of the unseen world that Allah created. And we need to learn about them as well as the angels because the jinn are the enemy to the human being. They promised that to Allah when Allah kicked them out of paradise and they're around surrounding us at all times trying to get us to take us to the hellfire. So we need to know how to prevent ourselves from following them. Okay, anyone else? Good job. Anyone else can tell us why it is important to learn about the jinn? Um, basically what she said also to protect us from, um, from, the, um, from the jinns and knowing them helps us to be conscious of them and be protected also to not be afraid of them. Okay, and there's also a point that you none of you mentioned yet. What that's really makes it important as to why we should know or learn about the jinn. Can anybody figure out what these two sisters fail to uh, mention that makes it more important than anything else? Why is it important to learn about the jinn? Anyone else? Um, the jinn have weaknesses too. And if we know how to protect ourselves, um, then we will also be protecting ourselves from their strengths and their, their overtaking us. Okay, Florida. she missed the point too. Can anybody tell me what is it that nobody has mentioned that every Muslim living on this planet should know, which is why, why it is so important to learn about the jinn? Anyone? What are these it, sisters missing? Is it to keep us stronger in our faith in Islam and keep us on our, keep us on our deen, stay in our deen? What is it everybody missing? Okay, guys, why is it important to learn about the jinn? What would you tell your children? If your child came to you and said, mom, why is Sister Layla teaching us about the jinn? It scares me. <clears throat> I don't think I should even know about this topic. I would tell them, first of all, you should learn about them so you will not be scared. But at the same time, you will know the tricks, how they can get into you and how they can make you do things you're not supposed to do so you can avoid them and know how to protect yourself. Same answer. What is it that everybody here is missing that you guys should know? The first thing, if somebody asks me about the gin, what's the first thing you tell them? I mean, why is it important to learn about the gin? I mean, the Fresno, are you in here to help them out? I mean, knows and she ain't in here. I mean, her was talking about this. It, Go ahead. It's important to know about the jinn so we don't fall into their whisperings and stuff. They're saying the same thing they're saying. What is it that everybody has missed? We stick to the Quran and Sunnah. Um, okay, they can't thank harm you. us. Thank you, Mr. Zarina. No need to oh. share anything else because you're okay. getting further and further and further away. What is it that they miss? Uh, Sister Rashida, anyone on Facebook? Why is it important to learn about the jinn? The most common sense answer. Why is it so important to learn about the jinn? Go, so, please uh, tell them, Tarek. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. 
so we don't fear them. Yeah, but what is it that everybody's missed? Even my Tarek missed it. Excuse me. Um, so <laughs> to learn about the gen, so we we don't commit um 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 have them trick us and commit uh shirk. And to stay away from um, it's the same answer. The know, but what is it? Oh, y'all said know the same him. thing. But what is? Why uh, is it so important to learn about the gin? It's so obvious. Where's Malion? Where's Isra? Isra, Malion, please help these people out. Why is it so important to learn about the gin? Habiba, is Habiba in here? Habiba. None of the people that know it are in here. Okay, if somebody, if somebody were to ask you guys, hang up your mics. If somebody were to ask you, why is it important to learn about the gin? This is the correct answer. It's important to learn about them because each and every one of us has a gin assigned to us when we reach the age of puberty. Allah put that jinn there. It's a devil. And Allah put him there. He's going to stay with us until the day we die because he is there to try to seduce us to disobey Allah. Why come none of y'all could say, think of that? So since this evil devil is attached to us at the age of puberty, you want to know how to resist his whispers. You want to learn how to protect yourself against him. Our personal gen is not a friend. He's an enemy. He's an ally of Iblis. So it's important for us to learn about him. So we are not victimized by him. Why come none of y'all thought of that answer? Can somebody tell me why that was too hard? Okay, can y'all tell somebody get on the mic and explain what was so hard about that? Did I not explain that well over this? We've been talking about the gym for over a month, for two months. I didn't explain this. Somebody tell me, because I want to figure out why y'all can't answer these questions. Maybe I'm not, you know, I'm medicated and I'm not teaching. No, it ain't you. It, 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 it makes sense now that you said it brought me back to. Okay, to what well, what, anyone me. else? Why is it y'all couldn't get that? Is it, did I not explain it to y'all before well enough? Anissa, the yes, way you Well, yes, was, you did. Then why come you couldn't get it, Umi Barrel? Uh, the thing is that, like, sometimes, the question will be right on your face, but like you said, you overthink about it. But that thing kind of come to mind, but I never thought that it was the right answer. I don't know. It, it, sometimes it's just weird. You can. Okay, that's why, God. That's the whole reason. Because even uh, uh, somebody, uh, one of the a famous speakers sent me an email. And he asked me, Sister Layla, why are you putting so much emphasis on the gym? I said, brother, don't you think I need to? Because if everybody learned about the gin, they wouldn't give in to their desires and commit the, the sin they commit like you doing, saying it's okay to be gay. I had to tell them, maybe you should teach about the gin and learn about the gin. So you won't be in your mosque advocating how we have to accept that children are gay. He didn't make me no comment back. I haven't heard from him. So that's why, because each and every one of us has a gen assigned to us. That gen's job is to get you to disobey a law. He is the tool that Iblis uses to take you to hell. So you have to know the games he plays. You have to know the tricks he uses so you can be on guard. That is the answer. All this other stuff, yoki dope, ga go ba do ba ba da ba ba do ain't got nothing to do with it. Islam is easy. Like Umi Barrel said, maybe y'all are overthinking. I want you guys to understand the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said anyone who has common sense can understand Islam. 
Islam appeals to any person who has common sense. Why do you think that people were converting? Ali was nine years old when he converted to Islam. Why do you think those companions were eight and nine? Because they had understanding and common sense. Islam is not hard. You guys are making this so difficult. Just stop overthinking and just look in your heart and give the simple answer. None of these questions are hard. <laughs> they're all common sense and they're easy. You guys are making it too hard by overthinking it. Y'all got to come up out of that. Every Muslim on this planet should have been able to answer that question and not none of y'all on this website even came close to it. Astaghfirullah. We got to do better. Okay, so yesterday we spoke about uh, one of the ways of safeguarding ourselves against uh, 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 the jinn, the evil jinn, is, you know, by taking advantage of the weapons that the Prophet Muhammad taught us that we have. And let me put the quiz up. Let's see how y'all do. And I really, I don't feel like being disappointed with y'all in these quizzes. If y'all can't get these answers right, I just don't know what to do because uh, the, I, I'm just really appalled. I've never seen students do so bad before on basic Islam, basic stuff. How can you learn uh, thicker when you don't even understand the basics of Islam? You guys can't understand this stuff. There's no way that you can learn the rulings of voodoo, the rulings of this, the rulings of uh, the different mathabs. Y'all need to stop. Don't even think you can learn that stuff when y'all don't even can't even grasp the basics. Okay, let me look at the quiz here because I did post it up on um, Facebook and uh, I forgot to put it on this. Uh... Let's look at the first question. Yesterday, we spoke about how uh, one of the weapons that our prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that we have against the jinn is caution, to be cautious and watchful. Now, I'm not asking for no hadith, no verses of the Quran or anything, no psychology. I'm asking y'all in plain, simple, everyday English terms to tell me how does being watchful and cautious serve as a weapon against shaitan? This is an easy question. I can't make these questions no more easier than this. Somebody get on the mic and tell me, how does being watchful and cautious serve as a weapon against shaitan? If you don't understand what it means to be watchful, look it up in a dictionary. You don't understand what it means to be cautious, look it up in a dictionary. And then somebody take the mic and explain how these two terms can serve as a weapon against shaitan. Anyone, start us off. Is it the Quran and the Sunnah? Sticking it's with the Quran? Is, is it sticking the Quran with the Sunnah? Is it sticking with the Quran and Sunnah? What is sticking with the Quran and Sunnah? By is what, is following. What sticking, is what sticking with the Quran and Sunnah? I didn't ask anything about the Quran and Sunnah. This is what I'm saying. What's wrong with y'all? Fatima, can you hear? I didn't ask anything about the Quran and Sunnah. Listen to the question. The question is, how does being watchful and cautious, Fatima, serve as a weapon against shaitan? I didn't ask how the Quran serve as a weapon. I didn't ask how the Sunnah. I want to know how does being watchful and cautious serve as a weapon against shaitan, guys? That's a simple well, question. And let be, me put it on the a, screen so y'all can see. Look at the questions, Fatima. This is it. Read it. How does being watchful and, so and cautious serve, serve as a weapon? I weapon want you to try to answer. Safe. Wait a minute. Stop talking with me. I want Fatima to get on the mic, read this question, and try to answer. Go ahead. Being watchful and cautious serve as a weapon against your time. Okay. Oh. Um, it's called, I don't know. <laughs> you know what it means to be watchful, right? 
Yes, yeah, being watching, making sure things around you are um, good. Okay. Cautious then how does that serve as a evil. weapon against Shaitan? Remember, you got your gen. Your gen. Who is, by the way, gen. guys, when we talk about Shaitan, yes. who is Shaitan we talking about? The devil. Yeah. Who, what, your personal who, gen. Your personal gen. Personal gen. Yes. Your personal gen is an, as an ally of Shaitan. He works for Shaitan. So yes. when even though I'm saying Shaitan, I mean your personal gen. Okay. So you look at these questions and you answer them in regards to how your personal gen attacks you. So the question here is, how does you being watchful and cautious serve as a weapon against that personal gen? Really? Staying away, staying what? away from, staying away from, um, like music and shaitan, um, things that aren't good for us. Uh, I think I'm answering it correct. I don't. I could. Okay, somebody um, else go. Just listen to somebody else, and then you and we'll come back to you. I'll when say, one um, person wait a minute, one is, at a time. I want Norto to start us off. Norto, please answer correctly so they can follow your lead. Okay. Don't come in here with no silly stuff, Norto. Okay. When one um knows about being watchful and cautious, they won't be duped by this by the same sins over and over again. So you won't be tempted into falling into the same sin. But next time you're watchful like of the things you do, of the sins you commit. So you won't fall into them again. Okay, being watchful means you will be conscious of the choices you make in life, Fatima, so as not to make choices that are bad for you that may end up leading you to give into your desires y'all see how i'm answering this question says no yes. problem this is easy guys i don't either i just i guess it's just the way i word it and i guess i'm not explaining it yeah, not the just way you. i I'm feel talking to everybody because norto didn't even what? word this right Look, I, I look at this answer, Norto, everyone. How does being watchful serve as a weapon? Well, being watchful means that I'm conscious of the choices I make in life. Because what is it about our, about our choices, guys? Uh, oftentimes, we choose to do things that we shouldn't do. And our gen plays upon that. So I'm going to be more conscious of the choices I make. And I'm going to weigh them to make sure I'm not making a choice that can end up being to my detriment, a choice that's going to end up leaving, uh, leading me to give in to my desires, to set, to have sex, to drink, to lie, to cheat. You guys see how I'm answering this? This is not hard. It really yeah, like isn't. being more aware. Is that good too? Being yeah, more aware. A, a, call, a watchful means aware. Yeah. Aware, right. Okay. Okay, so yes. a person that is watchful, let me, let me move this up here. A person who is watchful of himself is a person who is more aware of what he or she chooses to do in life more aware of their actions so they will know to repent if they choose to do an action. See how I'm breaking this down? That is bad, okay? Do y'all get it? I'm answering this question for showing you guys how to answer. What about caution? What about ca caution? How does being cautious serve as a weapon? Go ahead, Brother Colic. How does cautious? Cautious, cautious, cautious is to recognize when you become weak and know that the shaitan is, is plotting on your weakness of your dean and your faith. So 
So, you you know, that's being cautious, just knowing that he's waiting for your weak point, and then that's when he's going to attack you the most. Okay, that's good. Being cautious entails knowing your weaknesses and not playing into the hands of your personal gin by giving in to those weaknesses. Good job. He did a finally a person answer. Good. Somebody else. You guys see the so hard. Being aware of the pe being cautious around the people of people of other faith, not being around um, uh, Kaffirs and people that do wrong. This entails being cautious as to who we surround ourselves with. Good job, finally, Fatima. Thank who you. we surround ourselves with. A person who is cautious surrounds himself with strong, righteous others. Not weak, sinful others. Y'all get it? So this is how being watchful of yourself and being cautious with yourself can serve as a weapon against shaitan. Does everybody get it? This was not a hard question to answer. You guys just have to stop making it hard. You know, stop reading things into the question that's not there. It's simple, common sense. Okay, let's look at question number two. This is easy. True or false? Your personal gen sleeps whenever you sleep, and he is awake whenever you are awake. Is that statement true or false? Everybody give me an answer. True. I say true. False. Okay. False. 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 Said true. False. Everybody else? False. 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 Sorry. Okay, Sorry. exactly. This answer <laughs> is false. Yes. Why is it false? The prophet okay. said that um, if our personal gen was to sleep, we would have peace, and um, we just never yeah, get a break from that gen. And also, the jet never sleeps. Right, okay. <laughs> if our personal gen yeah. were to sleep, then we would have a break from him. So he does not sleep. Does everybody understand that? Okay, so he does not sleep. Your personal gen never sleeps. If he did, then we would have a break. We talked about how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that your personal gen hoovers around in your heart. When you go to sleep, he moves to your nose and he will stay up there in your nose and tie knots, try to get you to not wake up so you would miss your prayers. Got it now. I got it. Everybody understand that? Yes, so that's the Dalil. When you sleep, <laughs> you know, he moves to your nose. When you are awake, he stays in your heart. Looking for, for your strengths. Looking for your weaknesses. Okay, so with these quizzes, you guys are taking the knowledge, the hadiths and knowledge that I've taught you and just, you know, reiterating it. Okay, it's not hard. Okay, let's look at question number three. Okay, question number three is, wait a minute, let me move it so I can see. Okay, hold on, I made this a multiple choice. I tried to make this quiz easy. Uh, which is best at keeping your heart free of your personal gen? Is it A, remembering a law often, or is it B, thinking about death or is it c praying and fasting or is it d going to the mosque now just to reiterate all these things 
will help to keep your personal gen at bay. But one of these things helps even more. Which one is it? To remember a law often, to think of death, prayer and fasting, or going to the mosque? Who can answer? Somebody who has an answer first. Somebody who has not- A, remembrance of Allah. Okay, she said remembrance of Allah often. Do you guys agree with her answer? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. good job. That answer is correct. A, guys, the more one remembers Allah, the weaker your personal jinn becomes. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad said, keep your tongue moist with remembrance of Allah, because this will prevent us from giving in to our desires and our wants and doing things that we shouldn't do. That's why, you know, when we go through a hardship in life, I'm gonna use myself, I'm going through the roughest time of my life. Why am I teaching my classes? And I'm even teaching more classes now because it's remembering a law. This keeps my mind off the pain. It keeps my mind off of my family situation. It keeps my mind off of my bills. It keeps my mind off of everything because I'm thinking about a law. And then when I'm not uh, teaching, I'm writing in my book until I get sleepy because that's remembering a law too because the book is has to do with an islamic issue too okay so again guys the more we remember a law the less likely we are to fall into sin i'm not going to think about my depression my anxiety i'm not going to think about the pain i feel from my family i'm not going to think about how i miss my job or i miss my clients I'm not going to think about how I wished I, if I were a rich man, da, 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 da. I'm not going to think about any of that stuff because I'm too busy occupying myself with a law, remembrance of a law that keeps us home, hum humble. It keeps us grounded and it keeps us good. So the best answer here is remembrance of a law often, often, often. Okay, let's look at the next question, number four. Three, and this is it. Wait a minute, let me move it. Okay, the next question, why is sticking to the Quran? Now this one is about the Quran and the Sunnah, Fatima. Why is sticking to the Quran and the Sunnah so important? and safeguarding ourselves from shaitan. Why are those two things so important? Why is it so important to stick to what Allah says and what the prophet says as a means of protecting ourselves from shaitan? Anyone? Yeah, go ahead, Brother Ahmad. Okay, one of the reasons, uh, the most important reason is that you don't innovate. Can you? Yeah, I'm here. Just you don't me. innovate. Okay, you don't innovate because Shaitan loves us to innovate. And second reason is that you don't use your own opinion. For example, uh, scholars, some scholars use their own opinions on lawful and unlawful. Do you guys understand what he's saying? His connection is bad. Can anybody get what he was saying? No, I didn't understand. Okay, somebody else yeah. besides Anissa. Anissa, thank you. Let go to Mike. I want to hear from these other people. Somebody else. Why is it so important, Khadijah, to stick to the Quran and Sunnah? Why is that a great weapon against Shaitan? I couldn't understand, Brother Ahmad. Why is that such a great weapon to, uh, to stick to the Quran and the Sunnah? Why is that a great weapon against Shaitan? This, there's one answer that's common sense there. Kadi, let's hear from you. 
Brother Mike, let's hear from you. Muslima, let's hear from you. Norto, try it again. The Holy Quran, the Holy Quran in the Sunnah, along with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, teaches us how to live as Muslims. So it it tells us what we need to do in every aspect of our lives. So if we follow the Sunnah and read the Holy Quran and live with remembrance of Allah every day, we can hopefully, inshallah, make it to Jannah. Good job. That's a good answer. The Quran and the Sunnah give us the guidelines we need in regards to how to live our lives correctly. Good job. Good job. She started you guys off. Come on, give me some more reasons. Why is sticking to the Quran and Sunnah so important? Also, it um, helps us serve a great way of protecting ourselves and safeguarding ourselves from our personal de uh, devil. How? You ain't give me the way. How? We already know it does. Well, that's my question. How? How does it do that? How does sticking to the Quran uh -huh. and the Sunnah serve as an important way to protect yourself from your personal gen? That's the question. Uh, By teaching us about God. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, that's one way. They teach us about the shayateen and how to protect from them. Anyone else? Yes, it repels the, the shaytan. It repels them. Once how? he hears crying, once he... Once he hears Karen or seeing us do follow the Sunnah, he, he repels. He withdraws. Iblis gets angry when he sees a person practicing the religion correctly and he leaves that person. Okay, anyone else? Any other answers as to why sticking to the Quran and Sunnah is so important in protecting from the devils? Shaitan would rather See us innovate, knowing that this destroys Islam and its truthfulness. Okay? Shaitan wants us to sin. He wants us to not learn the rules and lawful and unlawful. These are answers y'all can give. I don't know why y'all just don't, but these are some good answers here. Okay, let's look at question number four. Why is seeking refuge in a law an important weapon against shaitan? Why is it a good weapon to say, I'udu billahi min a shaitan regime, guys? Why is that such a good weapon to use against shaitan? Anyone? Why is saying "Audu Balahi min a Shaitan or Jean" a good weapon against Shaitan, guys? Anyone? This is easy. Because every time we're saying that, the Shaitan we run away. Okay, exactly. Because every time the devils hear the name of Allah mentioned, they run away. That's easy. Y'all should have got that. Any devil, the devils of mankind and the devils of the jinn, if they hear the name of Allah being mentioned, they run away. So that's why we should say, A'udhu Billahi min a shaitan al-rajim. This causes the devils amongst mankind and jinn to run away. And let's look at the last question. 
Give me some of the times that our prophet Muhammad told us to, to say, Audu Balahi, Minashaytan regime as a protection. This is easy. Come on, let's start listing them. What I'm are some of the times? Go ahead. I'm in traveling in areas where they habitat, like the valleys. Good job. Um, when traveling through areas in which the jinn live. Good job. Some more instances or times that we should Also, when we're experiencing negative feelings, such as like anger and... Um, when we like become that. angry. Good job. What else? When we recite the Quran. Good job. When we recite Quran. What are some more times? We're entering our relations with your spouse. Before having relations with your spouse. What else? What else? Before entering our homes. Before if you have a bad dream. Entering homes. After bad dreams. Any more? Before eating? Before eating. Any more? Before entering an outhouse, if you have an outhouse. Before entering an outhouse. And also... When you hear dog bark or donkeys yeah. rain. Also, when you take off your clothes, remember that? When you take mm. off your clothes, so that way if there's any gin looking, they can't do anything to you. And also, when you hear the braying of a donkey or barking of the dog at night. Okay, so these are some of the times in which the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to mention the name of Allah and seek refuge in him because doing it will serve as a protection for us. I did not expect that quiz to take this long. I thought we'd be done with that quiz in 10 minutes because I made it so simple. I want you guys to continue to work on trying to get these answers right. Look at the videos again. When I put the videos up on YouTube, go watch them. So that way you can pause it and stop it and look at the PowerPoint. Okay, let me put the PowerPoint up on the screen for today because today what I want to do is speak about more instances, more instances in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to seek refuge in Allah as a protection against the jinn. So let me put this PowerPoint up on the screen. Oh, that's the wrong one. And by the way, this is session 20. Yeah, let me put this up. Yeah. Download session 20. Okay, here it is. Okay, let me screen share this. Uh oh, wrong button. Oh, this button here. Okay, this is um, our session 20 on the word of the jinn. And today we're gonna to speak about other instances in which the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to seek refuge in Allah. So as a means of protecting us from the jinn and we're gonna key in, focus in on why we do it before reading the Quran, okay? Now, whenever we read the Quran, a lot of people uh, uh, ask the question, Sister Layla, why is it that we have to say, Audu Balahi Menashe Tan Nirajim? 
before we read the Quran. Well, I want you guys to understand that the Quran is a healing. It's a healing for sicknesses of the heart. It's not a healing for physical illnesses. If you got cancer, you have diabetes, you got high blood pressure, reading the Quran ain't going to cure you of that. You need to go see a doctor. The prophet said, seek the, a medical uh, attention from a doctor for any physical ailments. The Quran, the prophet said, is a healing for uh, diseases of the heart, spiritual sicknesses. So it, the Quran will take away the whispers, for example, that come from our uh, uh, personal gin. The Quran will take away those desires to do things that are haram. Also, the Quran is the antidote to whatever shaitan tries to get you to do. So when we read the Quran, the Quran is a cure for all the diseases of the heart. It will cleanse the heart of jealousy. It will cleanse the heart of greed. It will cleanse the heart of, the heart of hatred and harboring grudges. So this is why before we read it, we need to seek refuge in a law so your personal jinn doesn't try to stop the Quran for, from serving its purpose. Does everybody understand? Now, if you one of those Muslims that think that because you got diabetes or you got COVID, just read the Quran and it's going to go away, your personal jinn knows that the Quran doesn't work for that type of stuff. So it's just going to laugh at you and let you, not, you know, knock yourself out being a fool. But if you understand that it's a cure for spiritual sicknesses, your gene is going to try to do everything in, your, in its power to prevent that from happening. So that's why you say, A'udhu Ballahi Shaitan before you read it. Okay? Also, another reason to seek refuge before reading the Quran is the fact that not only is the Quran a cure for diseases of the heart, but it's the guidance and it's the true knowledge and goodness of the heart. So again, your personal gen doesn't want you to be a good person. Your personal gen doesn't want you to listen to the angel that's assigned to you. Your personal gen wants you to follow him. So he will try to uh, distract you and things like that so that you're not paying attention to the Quran so you can't reap the benefit of it. So this is another reason why the prophet taught us to say, A'udhu Ballahi Mena Shaitan Nirajim before we read it. With the first scenario, we seek refuge to gain the benefits of the Quran. And with this second scenario, we seek refuge to maintain and be protected. So these are two reasons as to why we say, it's not Bismillah. We say, A'udhu Ballahi Mena Shaitan Rajim before reading. And also another reason that we say, A'udhu Ballahi Mena Shaitan Rajim is because the angels, we talked about this. Whenever you recite the Quran out loud, the angels of mercy that walk the earth, if they hear you, they will surround you and they will beat their wings and they will make dua for you and they will put their mouths on your mouth as you recite the Quran. And remember guys, the angels and the jinn do not hang out together. The angels are not going to come around you if there are jinn hanging around you. And the jinn are not going to come around you if there are angels. So you want to say, A'udhu Ballahi Mena Shaitan Nirajim. So if there's any jinn around me, they will get the heck out of Dodge. So that those angels of mercy that are walking the earth 
can come to me and put their mouth on my mouth and make dua for me. We have a hadith whereas one of the companions was reciting the Quran and he saw something like a big cloud of light in the sky. And the prophet told him that cloud of light were angels, the angels of mercy. We can't see them in their original form, but they can take on the appearance of an animal, a human being, or even bright light. And they love to hear the words of Allah being recited by us. They love to come and surround us and make do it for us when we're mentioning Allah's words like that. So this is another reason as to why we say "Audu Balahi Mera Shaitan Nirajin" before we read. Also, another reason we seek refuge before reading is again your personal jinn. He doesn't want you to ponder the meaning, just like this class. Why is it that so many of you cannot answer the questions on my quiz? Because a lot of you are here listening to me, but you're not thinking about what I'm saying. Some of you women are cooking dinner. Some of you are dealing with your children. Some of you are playing with your cell phone. Some of you are talking on the phone. So your mind is somewhere else. So you're not pondering what I'm teaching. So when I call upon you to answer a question, you don't even know what I'm talking about because you were distracted. The same way your personal gen comes between you and me and my teachings, that gen will come between you and the words of Allah too. He doesn't want you to ponder what you're reading. He wants you to just say the words and not think twice as, about, as to what they mean because he knows that if you don't think about the meaning, then what you're reading is not going to be a benefit, just like sitting in here but not listening, paying attention to what I'm teaching is of no benefit to you. And it shows when y'all can't answer these questions. You're just here. You ain't been getting no benefit. So this is another reason why we say, A'udhu Balahi, Minashaytan Rajim. And I'm going to also remind you to say it when you come to class too. When you guys come to my class and, and sit here to learn, I want y'all to say, A'udhu Balahi Mena Shaitan Rajim to make that personal jinn go somewhere too. So that y'all can ponder what I'm teaching and not just sit here just to be here. Okay? Also, another reason that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to say Audu Balahi Mena Shaitan Rajim before reading the Quran is your personal jinn. This is for the brothers. Your personal jinn does not want you, brothers, to read the Quran with the beautiful Tajweed. He just wants you to just go through the motion, just read the words. He doesn't want you to do the rules of Tajweed. So, because he knows, you know, doing the rules of Tajweed will bring you even more reward when you read. So saying, A'udhu Balahi Mena Shaitan Mirajim will stop him, will stop your jinn from, from uh, seducing you to just read without tajweed. We need to understand that uh, whenever we read the Quran, we are talking to Allah, just like whenever we make dua, whenever we supplicate. Supplication is a talk between you and Allah. Well, reading the Quran is the same thing. It's a talk between you and Allah. And you want to speak to Allah in a good way. You don't want to sit there and just ramble. So this is another reason why we say "Audu Balahi Min Ashaytan Rajin" before we read the Quran. Mm -hmm. There goes some people. Hold on. Also, another reason as to why we say "Audu Balahi Min Ashaytan Rajin." 
before reading the Quran is we want it to serve as a, a protection for our family. And by the way, uh, um, this part is not just reading the Quran. Whenever you come home from work, whenever you come home from the grocery store, whenever you wake up in the morning, whenever before going to bed at night, you want to say, Audu Balahi Mina Shaitan Rajim, and say it out loud. Because that way it puts you under the, your whole family under the protection of Allah. If there are any evil jinns in your house, say your teenage children were playing music all night. Maybe they were on YouTube. Audu Balahi Mina Shaitan Rajim that'll run those jinns up out of your house. And it'll put your family under the protection of Allah. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to seek refuge for his grandchildren. He used to say, I commend you to my grandchildren to the protection of the perfect words of Allah from every devil and vermin. Vermin are the, the spiders, the rats, the cockroaches, those things that get in our house that shouldn't be there. The prophet would say, make dua, he would say, I commend you to, to the protection of the perfect words of Allah from every devil and every vermin and from even the evil eye. And he said, your father, you uh, talk about Abraham, your father used to place Ismail and Isaac under Allah's protection by using these words. So again, you know, this is another weapon that we have against the shaitan. You want, you love your children so much. You want your family to live together in harmony, you know, then not only say Audu Balahi and a shaitan in a gene when you wake up in the morning or when you enter your home, but also recite this supplication. Say, I commend you to the protection of the perfect words of Allah from every devil and vermin and from every evil eye. This protects your whole family, not only from the evil shayateen, but from jealous people out there who want to wish evil upon you, and also from the cockroaches, spiders, rats, and other crap that can get in our house, including COVID, and harm us. So that's a supplication that serves as a great protection against uh, uh, the evil shayateen. And also, I want everybody to remember, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that the best protection against the devils of mankind and the devils of the jinn are the last three surahs of the Quran, the phallic, the nas, and the ikhlas. In fact, the Prophet wasalam, commanded one of the companions to recite the phallic, the nas, and the ikhlas three times every morning and three times in the evening. He said, doing this will protect you from everything. This companion was worried. He was worried about the evil eye. And there's a lot of Muslims today, a lot of you from Africa, you tell me how you guys are so afraid of somebody doing hassan on you. You're so afraid of somebody doing magic on you. You're so afraid of the evil eye. You're so afraid of the jinn possessing you. Well, the prophet said, he said, I used to worry about magic too. I used to worry about the evil eye too until Allah sent down the last three surahs of the Quran. Now I simply recite them in the morning and I recite them in the evening and I don't worry about the evil eye no more. And I don't worry about magic. I don't worry about tacit, none of that. So that's what I recommend you Muslims who are weak in your faith and you're so afraid of people harming you. 
If you recite these three surahs every day in the morning and the evening, nobody can give you the evil eye. Nobody can do magic on you. Nobody can make hasid on you. Everybody understand that? So those three surahs of the Quran are the best protection against the devils of mankind and the jinn. And that's why uh, Dr. Asim, who is our Quran Tejwi teacher, and also Dr. Saeed, that's why they emphasize you guys. They went for the new converts. They teach them the Fatiha first. And after the Fatiha, they teach them them three surahs. Because reciting those three surahs every morning and every evening you ain't got to worry about magic, the evil eye, or any of that other stuff. Gin possession, none of that crap. All right. Okay, so I want you guys to put in habit the words, A'udhu Billahi Mena Shaitan Nirajim, because these words serve as a protection for us against any evil devils that may be around us. I want you to recite those words before reading the Quran, before going into the bathroom, before going into places where the jinn live. You know, when you wake up in the morning to run any jinn out of your house, they might have got in there because your kids playing music, okay? Get in the habit of saying these things. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here for today. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, inshallah, you can type them on the screen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Any questions?